John chapter 4, verse 46. 43. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. Then when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in, at Jerusalem at the feast. For they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. We read that in chapter 2. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea in Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at a point of death. So the miracle in John is still working. When we, we're going to have to see in John salvation. Just because you witness to someone and they walk away, they didn't receive Christ as their Savior. They're not dead yet. There's hope. We don't pray for the dead people. We pray for those that are alive. This guy heard Jesus comes into where he made a water of wine, which you know that news spread all out. I mean, listen, you talk to a drunk and a, and a homeless man, he'll tell you Jesus made water into wine. It's like that's the only part of the Bible there is. Never mind, wine's a mark of strong drink is raging, whosoever is deceived thereby is not why. No, we don't quote that verse. So this guy is today... I mean, today when we're reading the Bible, he's working on a past old miracle, old news. And it's still going. It's still alive. And he hears that Jesus is coming. For us in this day, it would be like an old track. That was an old track. Exactly what I said yesterday. If you leave a track behind, 50 years from now, somebody picked it up and read it. That's still your credit. Yep. Or your family finds it after you're gone. So he hears the news and he's got uh, he's got a son who's got terminal illness. He's going to die. The wages of sin is death, but doctors have said your boy is not going to live. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. 1 Corinthians 1.22 Signs are for Jews. Jews require a sign. Alright? But you just you just see what Jesus said to him? You're believing the, the report of that marriage of Cana. Now you want me to, to heal your son. And for the Jews, there would be no belief. Mark 16 says, go out with the signs. You, you read them. Because the word is not written yet. To confirm the word, there is no Matthew, Mark, and Luke right now. They're being lived, not written. And the nobleman said unto him, sir, come down, my, my child die. This guy doesn't care only thing about his son dying. That's his life. That's his. That's his seed. That's his offspring. That's that's who he loves. And Jesus, I don't want to lecture. I want my boy to be alive. Jesus said unto him, "Go thy way, thy son liveth." So he commands the man, "Go." He promises the man, "Liveth." What's the man got to do? He's got to have faith. And that's another thing you're going to see throughout John. You got to see faith. That guy could have just. Oh, that didn't work. And what if. That didn't work. What if he walked. Okay, doctor, look at my son again, please. That son wouldn't live. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto. Believe the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. He didn't watch a video. He didn't go to a church carnival. You know, it's perfectly proper to give someone a gospel track. It's got the word. It's perfectly proper to give somebody a cassette tape or a CD of a message because it's got the word. I wouldn't give them a movie. 
no movie has the word. I mean, if it did, it's a really off sign movie that the world is not going to really hear about unless you got really believe the Bible believing Christians. Even that movies are going to have their little own little tint to it because they don't know what the Bible Bible times were. So he believed the word. Get that. That Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way. He didn't see nothing. He has heard nothing. He goes away. Okay, my son's living. He's not going to die. Now that's faith. You got to wonder if Satan ever just whisper in his ear. It didn't work. Well, he said it. And as he was now going down, his servants met him. He's, he's going to, they're coming from. And told him, thy son liveth. He inquired, then inquired he of them the hour when he had began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday. He didn't hurry home, did he? <laughs> Yesterday, <clears throat> still, I mean, just Jonah made the trip quick. Uh, Elijah outbeat Ahab. If he really wanted, I mean, he could have booked. And he didn't. Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So there was a fever. It was an illness with a fever that would bring death. Infection, maybe. That would do it. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Now that took faith. I went down to go see Jesus at the seventh hour. He said, Thy son liveth, and at the seventh hour you report that that fever left. That took faith. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Jesus made water and wine. What about the nobleman's son being healed? Well, why don't you mention that one, Mr. Alcoholic Man? You forgot that, didn't you? There was two miracles in Cana. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He was in Galilee. It says a feast of the Jews. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pole. I'm going to read my notes here. The sheep, Matthew 10, 6. Market a gate, Nehemiah 3, 1, 12, 39. Now I have even heard with my own ears from preachers out of the pulpits this verse, these verses here changed twisted to have anything but God we're gonna read another miracle about God and I don't understand it completely I'm gonna to read to you my understanding of the verse we're going to read so there's a sheep market a pull this is where they would bring the sheep they, they market off sheep stuff and sheep and there's a pull there which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda which means house of mercy or grace hmm. the sheep market get mercy and grace having five porches kind of a gazebo kind of I would assume with a nice little so this this place would have been beautiful I would think in these lay a great multitude multitude of in impotent folk a blind halt withered waiting for the movings of the water you ever been down to Daytona Beach, the, the part that's not the racetrack? You would see the blind and the home and all that. This is a, I would assume that this is a beautiful place, but there's a bunch of diseases. It's an outside hospital. These are people who have gone, and we're going to read in verse 4 why. No one can help them. And we read about the nobleman's son just before all these people. Now, for an angel went down at the certain season into the pool. Now, waiting for the, the moving of the water is removed from many modern Bibles. 
Why? Because they're gonna they can't explain what is happening here. Now I can't explain what's happening here either. All right, but I'm not going to change the Bible so I can make myself look. The Holy Spirit tells us an angel went down a certain season into the pool. And I've heard that verse twisted. Is it by God? Is it by Satan? I'll tell you what I know what the Holy Spirit tells me. An angel went down a certain season into the pool. It wasn't really an angel. It was just myth and, and, and folklore. Okay, the Holy Spirit said an angel went down a certain season into the pool. What do you believe? I believe a certain, an angel went down a certain season into the pool. I think if it was a tale or fable, I think the Holy Spirit would have told us. As far as this angel, what it is, I'm going to tell you. This is what I believe. The angel went down at a certain season into the pool. Okay? Explain it. I just did. You go anything outside of that, and then you're doing something you don't know. That'd be like me saying that, you know, Jesus had a long, flowing white gown, you know. I don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe like brown. I don't know. And troubled the water. Now, you see, with the springs that are in this area, when the hot springs mix with the cold springs of the snow, it would bring a bubbling effect. L listen, I've heard this from a pulpit. Let's remove the angel and let's put hot and cold water. Well, I put hot and cold water in my tub and the only thing that troubles the water is gas. I've never had hot and cold water coming out of the faucet and trouble the water. Okay? I've been in, I've been in water, lakes, oceans, rivers, whatever. And there's been a hot and cold water. You can feel, hey, it's hot down below. It's cold up here or vice versa. And it, the water isn't troubled. The angel tr troubled the water. So what do you believe? I believe for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. That's what I believe. How? What? I can't. An angel. Holy Spirit wrote it. Whosoever then was first after the troubling the water. I have no idea what that trouble in the water is. Stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. I got a note here, Exodus 4, 8, for whatever reason. So, this would be a very sight of anybody who wanted any kind of healing outside of God. That Whatever this angel did to this water, the first one in, I bet you they acted like humanly evolutionists would act dog eats dog me first i bet you no lame person would help another lame person get in and a oh look at that luke certain man <laughs> that's what luke kept saying certain man but in john the holy spirit wants us to focus on the angel of the river no he wants us to focus on the man we're done with the angel when a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. 38 years he's been trying to get into this water first. They probably would, listen, he's got to beg for, for a living. Everybody's there. I don't know if everybody was there only for the time the angel came in the pool and were able to leave. This guy, watch. When Jesus saw him lie, that doesn't mean tell uh, unfable. I mean, he's lying there. He's on the ground lying. And knew that he had been now a long time. What's a long time in Jesus? 30 and 8 years. That's, that's more years than he's going to be alive. He's going to be alive for 33 and a half years. 38 is long to him. In that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now, Jesus, that is a stupid question. Jesus, what is he doing there at the at the pool of the first hand? He's waiting for this angel. Don't you think? But you see, Adam, what didst thou? I know what you're here for. I know what you did. I want you to confess. God wants you to confess. 
And if you ain't got a salvation, I'm going to talk about salvation. I'm going to shoot down salvation of, of the, today of the church or not. If you are not going to confess, you don't have salvation. It goes all the way back to Genesis 3. The fall of man. What's the first thing that God said after man fell? I want to know what you did. I want to know what, who broke the lamb. Now see, in my house, growing up as a kid, it was great. See, I never did anything wrong. It was always the dog. And as I grew up later on, when I had my own children, I realized my mom knew who did it. And she wanted to know, she wanted me to confess so she could, you know what? Teach me to have character and teach me to be a man. And not blame others like Adam did and like Eve did. And you know what I found out in the workplace? I'm going to use it because I've had a lot of good instances where I've come up and told my boss, hey, listen, I did this wrong. You find out it works to your to your advantage. Now you, you're going to get in trouble. You did wrong, but just confess it. Don't lie. This man lied physically. He didn't lie verbally. And Jesus said, "You know, will thou be made whole?" You know what that also is that that tax Calvinism. There was not predominant on the earth that this guy would get up and walk away. No, you, do you want to be healed? That guy had an answer to Jesus. Yes or no? Free will. No, I'll wait for the angel to come next time, Jesus. And you know Jesus did. Okay, see you. Have a good day. Bye. The infinite man answered him, Sir, I have no man. I'm just trying to find my notes here. No one cares. I have no man. I just read today in, in a store where a woman passed out on overdose with a child with her. The child tugging her, the, the mother, the concern, whatever like that. And no one helped the child or tried to help the woman, but they sat there with their video phones and videotaped it. There are more videos about that woman passed out on the floor of that store than there was people to help her. We are back in Jesus' time. We are back in the times when before Judah fell, before the Babylonians. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. 38 years that man has been lying there and no one has ever tried to get him into that pool. And yet he stays. His faith is resting upon that angel in that water right now. And no human person, no Democrats come to help him. No Samaritan, no priest, no Levite, no pastor, nobody. It's the sheep market. Do you know how busy that, sh that sheep market was with all the shepherds, all the sheep? All the hirelings. But while I am coming, while he's going to that pool of the phone, another man steppeth down before me, steps right over him. And he didn't say yes, and he didn't say no, did he, to Jesus' answer? He pleaded, I ain't got no help. So by Jesus' answer, let's see what how the guy really answered. Let's see what the guy's heart is. Let's not let's take our eyes off the physical. Let's look at the heart for a minute. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. What do you think that man was saying? You think he was just coming up with opinions and, and gripes and put no man, he he's Jesus. He's he wanted Jesus to stay there, and when it came back the next time, he wanted Jesus to pick him up and throw him in, or whatever you did. He thought Jesus came to physically push him in or whatever you did. You see that? He thought after 38 years, somebody's, somebody's going to at least try to push me in. No one even asked, will thou be made whole to this gentleman? No one even asked, can I help you in? No one even asked, what about we just put you in a war until it happened? I don't know if that could work. All right, so me take up that bed and walk. 
and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed. So he had to rise. <laughs> In order what Jesus told him, rise, take up that bed. We read he took his bed. Before that, he was whole. He stood up. Now, that's just as much as a guy with a withered hand. Stretch out that hand. Jesus is always telling these people to do the impossible. And took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. Oh, no. Now we're going to see where all the caring people are. So this guy is saved. This guy saved according to what Jesus' salvation in his time as Jesus walked and breathed and, and lived. Okay? He had faith. He did what Jesus told him to do. So, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It's the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. There's no Old Testament law. Another reference, Jeremiah 17, 21. You're breaking the law. There's no excitement in the nation of Israel over a man 38 years couldn't do nothing, absolutely nothing, and was walked over and kicked upon and pushed aside so someone else could get healed. Hey, look at that. You look great. I didn't know you were so tall. What are you doing carrying that bed? That'd be almost, if you would say, well, how bad for today? What are you doing wearing that backpack now the law yeah in Moses time there was a guy picking up sticks but you were to rest on the Sabbath but the one that made the Sabbath and honored the Sabbath told you on the Sabbath take your bed and walk he got permission from God because the law is going away. Yeah, but the Jews don't know that. Yeah, the, if they would have known who Jesus was, well, hey, glory to God. So now see, they don't acknowledge Jesus who he, who he is. There's no joy. If they and Listen, they believe like that woman we just read, the Samaritan woman, and he's the Messiah. Look how great that city rejoiced for two days. You think about it, even with Paul, they, he was following the law, but the with his deal. Them, with the zeal that told them what to do. You know, like that man picking up six, the law told, God told Moses, you have to stone him, to make an example of him, to not do work. But here's Jesus, God saying, walk. Take up the bed and walk. He can override the Pharisees. He says, listen, God told me to do it, okay? Now let's read on. He said, they, get, they catch him. He answered him, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. This is exactly what he did to him. That's the truth. Listen, I'm doing this because a man who made me whole did it. And they asked him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed? Who told you to do this on the Sabbath? And he that was here wist not who it was. So he didn't even know who Jesus was when all this happened. We like, got faith in a man that we don't even know who he is. He wasn't like the beggar and, nope. and the, the blind man saying, you know, <laughs> He that made me whole the same said, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked them then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had not conveyed himself. But Jesus had conveyed himself away in the multitude being in that place. There's no faith in the name of Jesus. There's faith in the signs of Jesus. When Jesus healed this, this man, told him get up and Jesus just went on walking with the crowds now surrounding him. Wow, we just saw another miracle crowd around him. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. 
Ooh, what a place for the bee. He went right down to the temple. So, let's look at something here now. Let's look at what Paul says. Look at what we said. we've been reading now in John. A seed's been planted at the this troubling of the waters, the pool. Now the watering is going to take place in the temple. And God's going to give the increase. You can't have salvation without seed and without water. That's what Jesus found him in the temple. God, he didn't find him in a bar. God, he didn't find him in a bed with a woman who wasn't his wife. Glad he wasn't found him anywhere but in the temple. Bitch has been a long time, if ever he's ever been in that temple. It looks like he couldn't even walk, couldn't even get around. I don't know how bad his lameness was. I wonder if this was the first time he's been in the temple. And if it is, if, if he could not walk, if he couldn't even move to get in that water, now he can, and where's the first place he is? He's in the temple. That says a lot. And said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. That's a lot. I, I haven't heard that ever preached out of a pulpit. Sin no more. Now we're not under grace. We're under the law, law in the Old Testament. Least a worse thing come unto thee. And when you read, I think it's Ezekiel, I, forget, I think it is. He says, you know, if a man that does right, he does what he's doing. He, but if he goes and, and there's a whole bunch of sins. And he's going to die in his sins. It's Old Testament. Jesus is giving this guy a clean slate. Of go and do right. We're not under the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. Still elements of the law. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. What's he doing? For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession. There's another confession about a person who has come in contact with Jesus and got saved. I'm going to tell people about it. And he's not ratting on Jesus. Understand, these people ask him, who is this person? He now knows who this person is. It's Jesus. He's going back. Hey, you guys want to know who he is? I found out. His name is Jesus. Now he's expecting a celebration. Which had made him whole. He's being a witness. Five chapters into John. Five chapters. The date of this, my Bible was AD 30. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's correct. I don't know. But let's say if it's 30 and the calendars are right, he's just begun his ministry. And watch. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus. Remember it said when he met Satan in the wilderness, he left him for a season. Season's up. The Jews were all too happy to, to give in to Satan. That's a shame. And sought to slay him. Now we're coming up with important verses now. Pay attention. They wanted Jesus dead in John chapter 5. And how many more chapters we got in John of him dealing with them? Now they want him dead. Because. Because. A man who was. Impotent. He was troubled. He, I, I can assume that he just couldn't move. Or, or enough to roll. Something like that. Was healed. And took up his bed. And walked away. And we want to kill him. But see, the crowds are following Jesus. He's getting the crew. He's getting the news flashes. He's on the on the front pages of Jerusalem Post. He walks in the temple and they leave the assembly and go hear Jesus. 
After all, you remember what Nicodemus said about these groups? You are a great teacher from God with the miracles. They weren't. They were putting birth, carrying your bed. That, oh, that's a great message. Going to hell. You're going to hell because you did this. That'd be like going to church today on, on a Sunday. And it's not the Sabbath, but I'm just. That'd be like going to church and the pastor preaching and mentioned you're going to hell because you drove on the Sunday. Well, how else were we supposed to get here? Airdrop us? Spend the night, Saturday, you know? Sunday's not the Sabbath. So, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Big crime. Teach that to your your Church of Christ that believe in the Sabbath. Seven day Adventists, seven day Baptist Adventists, teach them. When was the last time they had a stoning for somebody who violated who started a fire in their stove? Uh that's work, isn't it? Uh huh. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Now get that. Get it. I'm gonna show you something. But Jesus answered them. Ooh, Jesus stands right, steps right up to the plate. Hi, how you guys doing? You got a problem? Miserable wench. My father worketh here too, and I work. Now watch. Here we go. Mark this verse. Mark it. It's written. Black and white. Page number. 1120. Chapter 5, verse 18. John, Gospel. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, number one, that's more important, get that. Watch the order. But said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. That's why Paul went out and killed Christians. You're, you're worshiping an image that you're not supposed to. That's violating the Ten Commandments. But notice the Sabbath came first before being God. The Sabbath was more honored before God was. First commandment was God first. I think the third one was the Sabbath. I, I don't have the complete order of them. I'm a, I was ex-Catholic, so I don't know the order. Now, you see first five, chapter 5, verse 18. Write that down. What charges did they come up with Pilate about why they brought... What was the accusation against Pilate? The temple. Here it is, right here. They should have walked up to Pilate and said, he violated our Sabbath and he made himself equal to God. Those are two accusations. And when they get to Pilate, they cop out. And the Holy Spirit puts in, this is your real trouble. This is your trouble. But what's the expression from the start? There's the accusation the Jews should have brought to Pilate. And what would Pilate say? Your royal Romanist. This man violated the Sabbath over and over. What do you think he would have done? Get out of here. We got our own holidays. He made himself a god. What would that be to a Roman? You know how many gods they got? In a little while, those Romans are going to honor his mother. <laughs> okay? So, those two things wouldn't work. But if we make him king, now we're, now we're attacking Caesar's seed. Because then they say, they're going to say in John, uh, something about they'll have Caesar over whatever it was. So, then answered Jesus and said unto them. By the way, the Jews did say that he was God, didn't they, in that verse? Yeah. Isn't that a testimony of the nation that Jesus was born of? The nation that he's after, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. What did they say? Yeah. That he's God, right? Send a whole bunch of Jews over to Jehovah Witnesses and tell them that. That was the accusation. That's the charge. Then the answer Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, important and important. I'm not changing verily, verily like a preacher I know. I'm just saying, it's important. It's important. I say unto you, who, the people making this charge, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. 
and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Now, what God is going to say, son, you see that man, that, you see that one man at that pole, that one man. Yes, father, go up to him, carry a conversation with him and heal him. And for a kicker, tell him to get up and carry his bed. Yes, father. Oh, I got something for you now, son. Thank you, Dad. Okay. You're going to really enjoy this one. Well, we're going to see who those people really I know. But, Father, you are me and I am you. But, boy, you're not down here living this. But you are. <laughs> you imagine the gas of God that hears his people. But then again, there's no wonder. Look what they did to him in the 40 years in the wilderness. Look what they've done in his entire life when they were in the land. So it's nothing new that these Jews are just reprobates. For as the Father raises up the dead, uh, 4, 46 to 54, there was a dead man. He's going to die. He's terminal. And he brought him to life. How about Jesus when he's going to rise from the grave? For as the Father raises up the dead, so who raised Jesus up? The Father. And quicken them, give them life. If I were to die before the rapture, who's going to raise me up at the at the rapture? The Father. The Father's going to say, okay, bride, get up. My son is ready. And you know what's so funny about that? You're thinking, Satan had to hand Christians over to God and say, I was their father, now I give them to Jesus Christ, the groom. Isn't that great? Doesn't the father give the bride over to the groom at that ceremony? Oh, here's Satan. I gotta give him up to you. Ooh, is that not downplaying? That a father who did not want his daughter to be married to that man. That was just, that was just interesting. A little extra money there. As the father raises up the dead and quickens them, that means quicken means make alive. Even so, the son quickeneth whom he will. So if the father can raise the son from the dead. So can Jesus rise whomso he will. So you're going to see resurrections in the life of Jesus. He's doing it by the power of God because God can raise him up and he is God so he can raise people up. He is authorizing to these Jews, I am God. No one has the power of resurrection. For the Father judges no man. Judge not, leave ye be judged. The Father is not going to judge. God is not going to be at the, at the great white throne judgment. And every name known by the name, God will not be on the throne at the judgment seat of Christ. Watch this. And I'm in no hurry to finish these chapters. But has committed all judgment unto the Son. Now let's look at this for a minute. We've already broken the half a chapter now, so I'm not in the hurry. We go out today, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. We preach the gospel that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, right? And that's all about the testimony of Jesus Christ, correct? A man has opportunity to say, Yes, I want to believe. Or man has the opportunity to say, no, I don't want to believe. That, yes or no, right? That's all you can do. Can you imagine a person who says no to the preaching of the word that we're told to do? Can you imagine a man that says about who we're talking about, Jesus Christ, saying, no, I don't want that. And at the great white throne judgment, you walk up to that man that we preached about. Now tell him no. Man, you're going to be pleading with all earnest, all credit cards, everything that you had that you ain't got no more, and nothing that you even have you're going to be. You're going to have a foxhole religion. God, if you only let me to glory, I'll worship. No. It's, it's not God the Father there. That's the Son. You're facing the one that died on Calvary. Now, can you just imagine rejecting Jesus Christ there at the great white stone judgment, and there's those hands pronouncing go to hell, and there's the holes that he died for you. And then he calls one of the angels or two of the angels, depending on how much you're going to fight, maybe three or four, and they chuck you off. There is the judge with the nails in his hands. I don't know if you're going to see his feet, but they're there and the hole in his side. Hey, I'm the one. 
that those people taught you about. I'm the one that that track was written about. I'm the one that the people that came to your door, I'm the one. You never said yes. See, some people want Mary. Mary would be nice. She's a mother. She can handle her son. No, she can't. God is holy. You can't stand before God at the great white throne judgment in your sin. God is so holy, Jesus has to do it. You don't want God at that great white throne judgment, even though Jesus is... Now, listen, I mean, it's, it's hard to explain the Trinity. If God was on that throne and you walked to him as a sinner, what did he tell Moses? You cannot see my face. You wouldn't even be able to walk up to the great white throne judgment. God, you're done. Next, you're gone. The great white throne judgment would be an instant of a season. But you're going to walk up to Jesus Christ, the one that died on the cross, that one that was buried, the one that what we just talked about was resurrected by God the Father. And you're going to stand before him and tell him why you didn't believe on him. Ooh, I don't want to be in them shoes. I don't want to be in them shoes. I can't even imagine what kind of judgment. I mean, this would be very minor, but can you imagine being in a courtroom as a drunk who drove a car and you have to turn around and look at the family's faces of the person you killed? How about the person that you killed? And you got to turn around and look at the wife and the, and the little baby that was left behind. No, look at them. Well, you're going to look at Jesus one day, saved or lost. You're going to walk up to Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ and explain to him why you didn't do what he told you to do. Oh, I just got saved and didn't want to go to hell. It's, it's an answer, but that's not the proper answer. See, Jesus is not going to be that lamb at the judgments. We got to get that. And even, listen, even when I stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ, he's not going to be happy with me. He's only going to say, well done, if any gold, silver, or precious stones remain. If. When I walk up there in the, in the wood, hay and stubble is also placed down the fire, and hey, he's going to look at me angrily. Why? Because there's there's wood, there's, there's hay, and there's stubble. There shouldn't be. Just by having wood, hay, or stubble placed on the block is, I haven't done all faithfulness to Jesus. That'd make him mad. What is that doing here in my courtroom? Then when it's burned up and whatever, the gold, silver, precious stuff, then, well done. We got to get that. Jesus is judge. The Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son. Get that. It's all about the Son. It ain't about programs. It ain't about vacation. But it's all about the sun. If that vacation Bible wasn't all about the sun, then it's not honored by God. Well, we have Bible. Okay. How many hours did you put in that in that week? How many hours went to eating? How many hours went into playing? How many hours went to the Word? How many hours went to Jesus? That will tell you what it's all about. Including the little fellowship dinner that you have for all the workers that did the work. I've been in many churches with the vacation Bible. Four of them, five of them. So I'm not picking any particular church out. I even was in one church one time. We had a carnival. Carnival, carnival, carnival. Bull, carnival, bull. I got a new name for it. Carnival, bull. Worship the bull. All men shall honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Oh, see, we love God and we love Mary. <clears throat> Wrong answer. He that honors not the Son, capital S, honors not the Father, which has said. You know what he's telling these Jews? If you're not going to honor me as much as you honor Jehovah, he's talking to the Jews. Go to hell.
go to hell. Now, don't tell me that Jesus never said he's not the father. That Jesus never said he's not God. What is he telling them now? You love the father. Paul, you love God. Yes, you do. But you hate me. Is that what Jesus told him? You persecute me. And Paul's love turned to the son and got right with the son. And look what God did to him. What about these Jews here that never turned to the son like we're reading now? They're in hell. He that honors not the son honors not the father which has sent him. So you've got to honor the father and the son as one. There's no lowering Jesus. You can't even say the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. It's got to be all in one. So you've got to have Jesus as God to be saved. Verily, very, it's important I say unto you, he that heareth my word. Did you get that? Here we go. Here's another salvation outline. Always the word. Always the word. You better have the correct word. You know, I'm going to make a statement here and a lot of people are going to hate me and, and fight me. And I don't know because this is me. You can throw in the garbage can. But I don't think if you don't, if you don't have a King James Bible. He that heareth my word. Other Bibles change what Jesus says. You know how much a stick. I'm not. Listen. For me. I don't know. Only God. You and Satan know about your salvation. But if I go by what I'm reading. You've got to have the word. And believeth on him, oh, the word, hearing the word, and believe. Hearing the word, and believe. And believe on him that sent me, that's the Father. Which we just read is also the Son, and the Son is also the Father. You've got to believe now that Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, and Jesus is half man. Oh, Jesus is all man, and all God. Sent. How did God send through Mary's womb, he, became, he was born. He's all God and all man. you got to believe in Jesus Christ as human and as God. And God sent him. Hath everlasting life. No baptism. There's no water. I don't think anywhere in this chapter. No attendance. you got to have the word. And shall not come into condemnation. Run back to chapter 3. We went through that. But passes from death unto life. Present deaths. Man, he is ripping these Jews because they don't believe he's God. Remember the charge? Got the charge? Forget the Sabbath. He made himself equal to God. Well, you better believe in me as God because I am God. And if you don't believe in me talking to the Jews... In the temple, he's preaching this in the temple. If you don't believe I am a God, you know, I am God, that God is in me, I have the power that God has of resurrection. I am the judge. Here's the sentence if you don't believe in me. Go to hell. And I'd be careful, saved or lost, to use the expression to go to hell, because you're making yourself judge. You don't realize what you're saying. And don't ever, lost man, saved man, ever tell a Christian to go to hell. That violates Jesus Christ. You're, you're judging someone who's already been judged at Calvary. And God says, I find no fault in him because of the blood of my son. How dare you say him to go to hell? My son took care of that by going to hell. What are you doing? Go to hell three strong words. You know what's even stronger words? Two words? Jesus Christ has a vein. Words. You know another strong word? One word? God. You know that word is so sick. The Jews will not put an old. 
They will do G slash D. That's how holy the name is there. They honor God. They love God. Yeah, well, it's kind of, but they do. They just don't love the Son. They won't even write out the name of God. They reverence the Word, but not God and not the Son. And the Word was John 1 1. What did it say? It's Jesus. Look at that. Look at that. John is so full of salvation. I'm telling you right now, you ever get somebody who's close to saved and they didn't get saved? Help them read a chapter of John every night. Prayerfully. I mean, they're agnostic and they're just not sure. By the time they finish John, if they don't get saved, they won't get saved. This is so strong. We have seen how many times we've we seen the plan of salvation and you can't beat it. And yet I've been in churches where they beat it. So I look at you and say, I don't think you're saved. Heareth the word and believeth on him that sent me. Hath everlasting life. John 3. And shall not come into condemnation. John 3. But is passed from death to life. Verily, verily, it's important I say unto you. The hour is coming. And now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. I say unto you the hour is coming. And now is. Now is. That happens when he dies. Boys, he's in the temple talking to Jews. Boys and girls, I'm your teacher. Boys and girls, get this down in class. There will be a resurrection, and you're going to witness it, and you're going to see them walking through Jerusalem, possibly to 40 days. He just prophesied that there's going to be a resurrection, and they're going to witness it. And you know what's so funny? Still, many of the people did not get saved. Can you imagine having somebody like Samuel come walking up to you with a little name? Hello, my name is Samuel. I got two books named after me. All right, my name is David. I'm the king, but I don't have no books in my name. All right, my name is Samson. Let's not talk about that. You know? Hi, my name is Adam. I'm sorry I caused all this. It's her fault. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. Sorry, Eve. <laughs> you know? It's what the Bible says. Verily I say unto you, the hour is coming. His death. And now is. That's what they want him. They want him dead. He just told him, you're going to get what you want, boys. I will be dead. And when I die like you want me, you're going to see those graves open. The power of resurrection. Look what he just told him. He's telling him about his death exactly what they wanted isn't jesus great and they don't even know what he said their ears are bl ears are blinded and eyes are deaf okay yeah Got that messed up he is laying out his death that's what they want and they, they're so out of it they don't even know what he just told them if they knew what he told them they would put a big old smile on and say hey, we're gonna get rid of them Set our calendars. The dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. It is finished. Kaboom. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given it to the Son to have life in himself. Life came from the Father. The Father's life came into the Son. The Son gave the Father life. But see, the Son, the Father gives life in the Son because the Son's going to die. Now, Jesus is God and God is Jesus, Acts 20 28. But there's a point when um, Jesus on the cross, there's some kind of separation of the Father and Son that moment that the Son needed the Father. I don't know. It's also a part that Jesus also became Satan, but I ain't even going to touch that one. I'll wait till Jesus teaches us that in glory. I'm going to be careful. But you can't study the Trinity out and understand. I don't even get the new birth. Remember Jesus said, I tell you earthly things and you don't understand it? This is heavenly stuff. I don't understand it. I just lay it out to you. I believe Jesus is God and God is Jesus. I also believe there's God. I also believe there's the Son. But they're one, but there's a father and a son, but they're one. And the easiest way I could I could explain it, someone told me is one times one times one equals one. But there's three ones, and they still equal one. And for as the father has life in himself, so hath he given it to the son 
to have life in himself. And he, excuse me, it has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Now, let's finish real quick. Jesus being born as a man and God goes to the cross for our sins. He died for all the world, but many will not receive it. A few will. He will be buried like a man, like a dead dog. He will be buried. And he will raise again the resurrection the third day, all according to Scripture. And by doing that in the obedience of the Father for us miserable people, God says for that, not only am I going to give you a bride, but I'm going to give you all judgment. And those people who rejected you and rejected me, son, you will judge them. Now that's an honor. And you're going to tell me that when I preach the cross of Jesus Christ, your works, your bank account, your being nice is more than Jesus? Well, who is going to sit in the judgment seat? Answer my question. Some people think they will. Some people will have the nerve to take Jesus off the seat. Listen, Baptist churches are doing it like the thousands. Someone told me the other day, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you. Someone told me that the pastor left their church and most of the church left with it. Well, who's on the throne? I wonder who. It's not Jesus. You would have stayed. 